Hello photographers! Let's talk about ISO today. First of all, ISO is an acronym for the International Organization for Standardization. This is an international body that sets industry and commercial standards. In photography, ISO is the number used to indicate the sensitivity of your sensor. And photographers use ISO as a shorthand for this number. I'm using ISO 100 or I'm using ISO 6400. The numbers can range from 50 to 6400. There are numbers outside of that range that, that can be used, but for the most part, most manufacturer, manufacturers of cameras and sensors stay within this range. So what do these numbers mean? Well, ISO 6400 indicates that the, sensor, that the sensor is very sensitive to light. It doesn't take very much light to create a decent image on the sensor. Conversely, 100, ISO 100, uh, isn't very sensitive and it requires a good deal of light to create a decent image on the sensor. Let's say you're in a restaurant with a bunch of friends and it's very atmospheric. It's got a fireplace over in the corner. It's got a few candles placed throughout, incandescent lights. Not a whole lot of light to work with. This is a situation where you would probably use the higher, higher ISO numbers like uh, 1600, 3200, or 6400. You're not going to want to set up a tripod in a, in a big restaurant, you know, crowded restaurant. Um, you're probably not going to want to use a flash. You don't want that, not, that really hard flat, white flash on people ruining the atmosphere of the restaurant. So crank up your ISO to 3200, 6400 and see what works for you. However, if you're outside, bright sunlight, your friends are playing softball or soccer or something, that's a great deal of light. So you won't need to, you won't need a really super sensitive ISO setting. Uh, ISO 50, 100, 200, that's more than enough. Um, and it's a much better quality for that bright light. Now, of course you can shoot ISO 100 in a very atmospheric low light situation, but you'll need to adjust the aperture or the shutter speed. Um, you'll need a slower shutter speed or a wider aperture. Uh, and probably a tripod as well. Now, there are various reasons for using various ISOs in various situations. Um, but for the most part, you, especially in the beginning, you want to you want to kind of keep with the basics, which is a low ISO for bright light situations and a high ISO for low light situations. Once you get a little more experience and understand the workings of the camera, you can start experimenting and playing around with the ISOs just like with the aperture and with the shutter speed. Another thing to keep in mind though is noise. Uh, that's sort of the digital grain you get when you have a very high ISO or very low light situation. Uh, you, it it, it, it uh, introduces grain into the image, kind of degrades the image a little bit when you start cranking up the ISO. In the lower ISO numbers, you don't have that problem. That's why people try to use the 50, 100, 200 most often you're gonna get the best color rendition and the sharpest, cleanest image. Least amount of grain, very fine. That being said, the quality of today's sensors is so so head and shoulders above what it was 10 years ago, even five years ago, that the difference between the lowest ISO uh, quality and the highest ISO quality is not as great as it used to be, so I really wouldn't sweat it too much. It's just something to keep in mind. Now, generally speaking, uh, at the beginning of a shoot, I try to set my ISO and leave it, especially if I'm dealing with pretty consistent light. That way I only have to deal with the, the shutter or the aperture as I'm going along changing the uh, exposure. And by now you've probably picked up on the fact that the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed all work in conjunction with light to create a decent image on the sensor. If you adjust one one way, you have to adjust one of the other two the other way. You've got to make compensations with it. Shooting in automatic mode is perfectly fine. Uh, especially in the beginning. But as you progress, you're going to discover you're going to want to have a little more control over your exposures. And having a good understanding of ISO, f-stop, and shutter speed will go a long way in that regard. I really hope these last few videos have been helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, or you need me to expound on anything, please leave a comment down below. And until next time, good light and good shooting. See you.